ever wondered what secrets history might be hiding from us? What if there are chapters of our past that are forbidden or intentionally kept under wraps? Prepare for a journey into the shadows of the past as we unravel nine dark and mysterious cases of forbidden history. Imagine a bank so secretive, its dealings are shrouded in mystery. Welcome to the Vatican Bank. This ultra-secret financial institution is the private bank of the Catholic Church. Founded in the heart of the Second World War in 1942, its original purpose was to protect the Church's assets. Over time, however, the Vatican Bank found itself drawn into a swirl of financial scandals. Despite its religious roots, it has been accused of being a tax haven for the wealthy and powerful. The bank's operations, cloaked in a veil of secrecy, have led to its reputation as one of the world's most mysterious financial institutions. With no external audits and a policy of discretion, the Vatican Bank has been the subject of scrutiny and intrigue for decades. This is the paradox of the Vatican Bank, a religious institution embroiled in worldly scandals. A bank that became a paradox, a religious institution embroiled in worldly scandals. And what if ancient cave paintings are not just art, but messages from another world? Delving into the depths of India, we stumble upon paintings that are an astounding 10,000 years old. These archaic murals, etched onto the rugged surfaces of caves, seem to depict unfamiliar figures and shapes, eerily resembling UFOs and extraterrestrial beings. The local inhabitants, steeped in their age-old traditions, weave tales of small, otherworldly visitors who would descend from the skies, abducting the unsuspecting. These legends, passed down through generations, add a layer of mystery to these puzzling depictions. However, we must approach these interpretations with a pinch of skepticism. Could these be simply the artistic expressions of our ancestors trying to make sense of the celestial events they witnessed? Or could they be depictions of deities revered and feared in equal measures? Are they mere depictions of gods or celestial events, or an ancient record of extraterrestrial encounters? The ambiguity remains, making this chapter of forbidden history an enigma waiting to be decoded. A secret society that many believe still pulls the strings of global events, the Illuminati. This clandestine group was born in the year 1776 in Bavaria, an enlightened assembly dedicated to the pursuit of science and reason. Their mission was simple yet audacious, to oppose censorship and challenge the Jesuit control over universities. Their influence, however, was short-lived. By the closing years of the 18th century, the Illuminati had vanished into the annals of history. Yet, their legacy persists, shrouded in a veil of mystery and intrigue. Today, the specter of the Illuminati looms large in popular culture, spawning countless conspiracy theories. From controlling world leaders to engineering major global events, these modern myths attribute a near omnipotent power to this forgotten society. But how much of this is truth and how much mere fiction, the Illuminati? A historical reality or a persisting myth? A treasure trove of Native American history, ruthlessly plundered, the Spiro Mounds. In 1933, beneath the earth in Oklahoma, gold prospectors stumbled upon an unexpected discovery, a hidden tomb, a time capsule of a forgotten era. Yet instead of archaeological exploration, what followed was an egregious act of looting. Thousands upon thousands of priceless artifacts, cultural treasures of the Spiro people, were ripped from their resting place. These relics sold to the highest bidder scattered to the four winds. The grave was left bare, its secrets lost. The potential insights that could have been gleaned about the Spiro civilization, their customs, their beliefs, their very way of life, were forever lost in the wake of this unforgivable act. We can only imagine the stories these artifacts would have told, the history they held. A lost chapter of Native American history, plundered and sold. A list of forbidden books that once controlled the flow of knowledge, the Index Librorum Prohibitorum. This was a tool wielded by the Catholic Church, a catalogue of prohibited literature that was deemed heretical or morally corrupting. Established in the 16th century, the Index was the Church's attempt to maintain moral and doctrinal purity amongst its followers. It was a sentinel, a gatekeeper of sorts, deciding what knowledge should be shared and what should be concealed. 
Books that challenged the church's teachings, promoted scientific ideas that conflicted with religious doctrine, or were considered obscene found themselves on the index. The church's grip on information was ironclad. However, as centuries passed and the world evolved, the church's control started to crumble. The age of enlightenment, the invention of the printing press and the spread of literacy chipped away at the church's stronghold. In the mid-20th century, the index was finally abolished, a testament to the church's diminishing control over information, an ancient tool of control finally rendered obsolete by the tides of time, a deity of death worshipped by millions despite condemnation, the Santa Muerte cult. This cult, which reveres the saint of death, has found its place in the heart of Mexico, particularly among marginalized groups. The figure of Santa Muerte, or holy death, is seen as a powerful ally in a country where poverty and violence are everyday realities. Despite the Catholic Church's denouncement of this cult as heretical, it has grown tremendously over the years. Some estimates suggest it has up to 12 million followers, making it one of the fastest growing religious movements in the Americas. But why the devotion to a figure of death? For many, Santa Muerte is a protective figure, a potent symbol of survival in a country where life can be brutally short. A symbol of the marginalized, the Santa Muerte remains a controversial figure in Mexico today. Exorcisms, a practice from the Dark Ages or a necessary ritual in modern times. Let's delve into the world of modern exorcisms, a realm where faith confronts what's often perceived as the darker side of the human condition. At the forefront of this spiritual battlefield was the Vatican's own Gabriele Amoth. Over his life, he claimed to have performed a staggering 160,000 exorcisms. The figures may seem astounding, yet they underscore the enduring belief in the ability to cast out demons from the afflicted. While many might view exorcisms as antiquated or even superstitious, for others, they remain a crucial tool in their spiritual arsenal. From individuals feeling tormented by unseen forces to those who believe they are possessed, exorcisms offer a path to perceived salvation. So, in a world increasingly driven by science and skepticism, the practice of exorcism continues to persist, a testament to the power of belief and the unending struggle between perceived good and evil. In a world driven by science, the practice of exorcism persists. A dark chapter of Ireland's history, the Magdalene Laundries. For two centuries, these institutions, run by Catholic nuns, served as forced labor camps for women labeled as fallen. These women, often unwed mothers or those considered morally wayward, were subjected to a life of servitude and brutality under the guise of penitence and reform. Stripped of their identities, these women toiled in silence, their pleas unheard, their stories untold. They were prisoners not of bars and chains, but of societal norms, religious dogma, and a system that failed to protect them. This grim tale of exploitation and cruelty remained shrouded in secrecy until the 90s. A shocking discovery of a mass grave at one of the laundries turned the spotlight on this grim chapter of Ireland's past. The revelation sent ripples of outrage and remorse across the world, forcing Ireland to confront its dark legacy. A cruel and inhumane system, hidden from the world until a mass grave brought it to light. A device that could view the past, the rumoured chronovisor. Now, let's dive into this intriguing tale of time and secrecy. The chronovisor, a name that sounds like it was pulled straight from a science fiction novel. Yet the origins of this alleged device are rooted not in the realm of fiction, but in the hallowed halls of the Vatican. The story goes that a Benedictine monk named Father Pellegrino Ernetti crafted this device in the mid-20th century. Ernetti, a man of many talents, a linguist, a musical expert and an exorcist, claimed to have invented a machine capable of peering into the past. According to Ernetti, the chronovisor worked like a television, tuning into events from history instead of channels. With it, he claimed to have watched biblical scenes unfold, from Christ's crucifixion to the Last Supper. A tantalizing thought, isn't it? But why would the Vatican want to keep such an invention under wraps? The reasons are manifold. The potential misuse of the technology, the religious implications of viewing sacred events, and the ethical concerns of peering into the past. It's not hard to see why the church might want to keep it hidden. However, it's important to note 
that there's no concrete evidence supporting the existence of the chronovisor. Many believe it's nothing more than a myth, a fascinating story spun by a creative priest. Others, however, hold on to the possibility that the device might be real stowed away in the Vatican's secret archives. Ernetti himself never produced the chronovisor, and his claims have been met with skepticism. Despite this, the story of the chronovisor continues to captivate, a tale of what might be hidden in the shadows of the Vatican. As we wrap up our exploration of forbidden history, we're left with more questions than answers. Is the chronovisor a work of fantasy? Or could it be a carefully guarded secret of the Vatican? Until the truth surfaces, it remains an enigma, a fascinating piece of forbidden history. The chronovisor, an intriguing myth or a hidden truth of the Vatican?